morning. I hope all of you enjoyed the break on Tuesday and are wrapping up this first marking period of the year rested and ready for what is still to come over the balance of the semester. Our first day of classes, if you were wondering, was five weeks and two days ago. And we'll take a break for Thanksgiving, five weeks and two days from now, halfway there. Family weekend begins in just a week with the following Monday off ahead of the final push through the fall season. We are gaining speed as we go and it will be exciting to see our hard work come to fruition in all kinds of areas over the next month plus. I have two things I'd like to do with the time I have this morning. One of them I have had planned for some time and one of them has been thrust upon us with the tragedy that continues to mount and unfold in Gaza and Israel. I'll start there. To begin, I'm not an expert on Israeli-Palestinian history, although I know it to be charged more often than not, and sadly, fraught with pain and suffering that reaches civilian populations far too often. As you likely know, this current and especially horrific chapter was initiated by the indefensible, unconscionable, and indiscriminate killing of what is now counted as well over a thousand people in Israel by terrorists. And it seems likely that additional civilians will suffer over the days, weeks, and months ahead. I touch on this today for two reasons. First, the magnitude of the carnage over the past five days along with the carnage that may still be ahead for civilians caught in this conflict's web deserves our attention and care. As we hope for leadership that will bring this catastrophe to an end, it feels important to name that. Second, it is also important to name that this tragedy may well impact members of our community in ways that we don't see and feel in our interaction with one another. I don't know whether anyone here this morning has been directly impacted by this violence. I don't know whether anyone here this morning as a relative or a friend or someone they care about who has been directly impacted by this violence. I also don't know that not to be the case. And I think it's important that we keep in mind that we don't know what we don't know and allowing space and opening for members of our community to process what is happening in Israel and Gaza in their own way and at their own speed is important. To that end, as Ms. Ludi's email referenced last night, there will be an open forum in the Keating Room tonight at 6 p.m. for any member of the community who would like to join a conversation about the current situation. All are welcome. And thank you for doing your part to support one another as the situation continues to evolve. Now the plan I've had for some time for this particular chapel. It is October. October is my favorite weather month of the year. There are lots of reasons for this, including temperatures that are usually just right, not too hot, not too cold. It's a great keep your windows open month, in my opinion. The leaves and the trees of this magnificent campus of ours are in the process of turning brilliant colors, and this will continue for the next few weeks. When the sun is out, as it mostly is today, and the clouds are scarce, and I'm wearing my glasses, there's a vivid, sharp, crisp look and feel to a nearly perfect October day that just can't be beat. Today, for instance, according to my Weather Channel app, has a low temperature of 43 degrees, a high temperature of 66 degrees, and winds from the west at about eight miles per hour. All of that is nearly perfect in the very pleasant range, in my opinion. As the day wears on and we get closer to 66 degrees than 43 degrees, you'd have a hard time convincing me that there is a better place to be than outdoors at Brooks School on a day like today. I share all of these October virtues ahead of identifying what the most important weather measurement for the perfect October day at Brooks School happens to be. If you were in your second or something more than a second year here, you may recall my occasional references to the importance of the dew point. If you're in your first year at Brooks, today's your lucky day. I'm gonna tell you why the dew point is so important, the most important weather measurement of all. 
In order to do that, I took a page out of Mrs. H's playbook and decided to ask ChatGPT a few questions. My first question, why is the dew point the most important weather measurement of all? ChatGPT's response, the claim that the dew point is the most important weather measurement of all is subjective and not universally accepted. Boo. <laughs> Boo, I say to that. Further evidence that ChatGPT is way overrated. My follow-up question, what me weather measurement best reveals how sticky things feel outside? ChatGPT's response, the measurement that best reveals how sticky things feel outside is the dew point. The dew point temperature indicates the level of humidity in the air and is a key factor in assessing comfort and stickiness in weather conditions. A much better response that goes on to say that the dew point provides a more direct and accurate measure of humidity related comfort. Are you following? Compared to relative humidity, which can vary with temperature change. In other words, relative humidity is a useless measurement. When it comes to stickiness, the worst type of weather by far, dew point says it all. My final question, what is the optimal dew point level? Chat GPT's response, the optimal dew point level is subjective and depends on personal preferences, the activity or situation, and local climate. There is no one-size-fits-all answer because what feels optimal in terms of dew point can vary from person to person. Boo again, I say to that. But ChatGPT goes on to say many people find dew point levels in the range of 40 to 60 degrees to be comfortable. Better, but the best answer would have been 45 to 55 degrees. No one is ever in a bad mood when the dew point is between 45 and 55. And if you are, that is on you. Today, for example, the dew point is 47, magnificent. Under 45 and your lips begin to get chapped. Above 55 and you begin to melt and perspire in embarrassing ways. So 45 to 55 is where it's at. Take it from me. This brings me to this year's Chipotle challenge. Held in October, because the odds for agreeable dew point levels are with us for all 31 days. Again, for those of you in your second year or more at Brooks, you may remember previous year's Chipotle challenges. For those of you who are just beginning, welcome to your first try at earning an all expenses Chipotle dinner with yours truly. This tradition started eight years ago in 2015 when I was searching for ways to coax our community to explore and enjoy the great outdoors at Brooks School. It pained me, still does, to know that some of you have not ventured down to the lake and other far reaches of this campus, your campus, and a campus that you will remember for the rest of your life. Unacceptable. At the time, I thought, what can I do to encourage, maybe bribe, students to get off of Main Street and into the wonder of this place. Chipotle was the answer then, and Chipotle is the answer now. This year's Chipotle challenge will get underway with a good part of the fire trail still off limits, with downed trees and work still to do to make that stretch along the lake safe to explore. With that limitation in mind, I've landed on five locations with spectacular views that your group will need to visit in order to meet the challenge. Here's how it will work, starting with the rules, and I will send this to all of you by email after chapel. In a group of no less than three people, you must visit all five of these locations with spectacular views and take a picture or short video of your group at each location. You then must share those pictures or videos with me. Emailing them to me is the best way to go. Once I verify that you have visited the correct five locations, your group will officially be invited to a Chipotle catered dinner that will happen before we break for Thanksgiving. You have one week to complete the challenge. Pictures and videos are due by 8 p.m. on Thursday, October 19th. You get extra credit for revealing how you are having fun when you are taking your pictures. Videos of your journey set to music are also much appreciated. 
And if you do the challenge on a day when the dew point is between 45 and 55, most days in October, you will forever earn a place in my heart. So what are this year's five locations, you wonder? Here they are. Number one, while trying to avoid ticks, make your way up to the observatory and look back at your school to see it differently. It is quite a view. Take a picture or video from that spot in whatever way you are moved to do. Number two, from the observatory, head down the road to the brand new and now accessible boathouse and find your way to the deck overlooking the lake, Brooks School's newest spectacular view. Find a way to record your group with all of Lake Kachichewik in the background. Number three, from the boathouse, head up the hill, past where Miss Knowles and Dr. D'Angelo live, to what we sometimes refer to as the Joshua Tree, in between all of the playing fields out there. Mr. St. Cyr tells me this is actually a European linden tree, planted on April 26, 1948. Somehow he knows that. There is not a tree on this campus that Mr. St. Cyr can't identify. Take a picture of your group with the stone wall and lake in the background. Number four, from there, head for the open portion of the fire trail used by the cross country team for races, beautifully rebuilt by our facilities team. And follow the trail until you almost reach the dock that is categorically and unequivocally off limits, not school property. Find a spot along the trail, short of the dock, for your group to pose with as much of the lake in the background as you can fit and capture the moment. Number five, head up the fire trail to the thirds boys soccer field, cut between the Musto and Nam residences in the direction of the Russell House site. Assemble your group on Russell Drive and take a picture in the direction of the athletic center, capturing the beauty of the trees that so perfectly line that wonderful Brooks School scene. With this last picture or video taken, you will have completed the 2023 Chipotle Challenge. My hope is that the journey will reveal your campus to you in ways that you have not yet seen, and that you might find a few favorite views and locations of your own along the way, I will eagerly await your submissions over the next week, followed by all the Chipotle we can eat once November rolls around. Have fun and get to it. Thank you.